by the head coach of Epic FC Toronto, the under-14 boys Ontario Cup champions, winning in style, penalty kicks, dramatic game. Manny, thanks very much for joining us. Thank you. If you can just start by giving us your thoughts on how the game progressed. A little bit of a slow start for both teams and really picked up in the second half, obviously. Yeah, most definitely. Um, we, we knew that uh, the, uh, the, the team um, was, you know, was going to go into a big game, a little bit bigger than most, most of these guys have experienced in their, in their young careers with it being um, a national year and things of that nature. Um, we switched our formation a little bit to be a little bit more conservative, and it looks like it was a good, a good idea because we, we, we were a little bit flat at the beginning, and, and you know, both teams sort of in the first 20 minutes wanted to feel each other out. I think in maybe the first five minutes we, you know, we sort of got out to a quick start, but then after that, you know, the game was really, you know, a, a, a midfield battle, you know, for, for you could say for, for a good majority of the first half. Um, ultimately, uh, kudos to Oakville, though. I, I mean, we, we had never played them before, you know, in, in, in youth soccer, and um, they, they, they deserve every bit to, to, to be here. Ronaldo Marshall with the opening goal for you. Shortly after a goal had just been called back, bit of an emotional moment as that game was emotional. Just talk about Ronaldo's play on the day as well. And, um, yeah, and for sure. I mean, uh, you know, we, we have, you know, some, some of uh, the best strikers in the age group, and I think it, it, it's, it's safe to say that he's, you know, he's one of the guys that we, we really look to to get the ball in the back of the net for us. And you know this is you know a big game, and he's he's a big game player. And uh, from from that situation, we knew if if he got a couple opportunities, that one of them was going to go in. And he, he did well to take his finish. He was really uh, determined from from his standpoint, and uh, had great com great composure as well. Just after having that offside goal called back to keep his emotions in check, because like you said, it literally happened like minutes later, right? So. And then the emotional finish, looking like you're about to close out the game and uh, go on to the championship, Oakville tying it in the dying seconds of regular time and then going to penalties. How do you calm your team down in a situation like that after something you're riding such an emotional high as it is? How do you calm your team down? Well, it's it's, it's really, really tough, Ben, in, in, in that situation, you know, especially with a minute left. It's happened to us before, you know, um, I, and, and I, I, I'm glad it has, you know, in, in maybe younger younger phases of, of, their, of their age groups and, and competitive nature um, you know it, it's 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 really like we we get into a situation where we get scored on the momentum's completely wiped off um, it's it's a real downer and right away we got to pick ourselves up and and, and get our, our, our nerves in check our guts in check for penalties so it, it was really tough but at the same time um, you know experience and reference is, is important too and you know we've we've been on the other side of of, of of the of the result where you know where Oakville finds himself today and again kudos to them you know if when when they, they stuck with it to the end um, if, if it went uh, the score went to the other side uh, to Oakville today I mean from from our aspect you know there, there couldn't have been a lot of arguments as well they, I think they, they did enough to deserve to win and it's always tough to lose in penalties you know and it was just it came down to just you know you wouldn't even call it a mistake but it just it just came down to you know one one player shooting a little bit off and you know we uh, we're, we're not complaining sometimes um, if 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 you're you know if you're a team of destiny you have to you know tempt that right it, so it is a tournament of destiny a lot of times for sure it's a razor's edge for most teams you can just one mistake can knock you out of the tournament just take us on your journey through this uh, through this tournament and the Ontario Cup and obviously the emotions around yeah, for sure. Um, I mean, going back to you know Epic FC Toronto as a whole. I mean, we're 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 not a big entity by any means. We have about seventy five athletes um, within five age groups. So this is huge for us. You know, this is something that we identified. Um, our 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 U fourteen team has been you know traveling for a, a good part throughout North America against top competition, and you know are 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 considered one of the stronger you know teams in in the age group. So this is something that we identified um, basically from the time that we lost in the semifinal to Brampton in U13. So we said, you know, next year's Nationals, um, we really have to, you know, make it the goal to, you know, have everybody in sync to wanting to be here. That's that's a good first step. And um, the, the boys have worked for it, you know, four, four, four or five sessions a week, um, including games. Um, and, and they're they're really you know the, the the pinnacle of our of our program you know a very small program but again huge win for us today because it it, it really spells you know um, you know to and, and speaks to the, the the talent and and you know the the uh, the application that that we have overall consistently across the board it's a great reference for the younger guys as well. So now off to nationals, um, big exposure as as you're alluding to. 
going up against teams you've probably never even seen or heard of in some cases, how do you prepare your squad for something like that? Yeah, for sure. Ultimately, the, the, the good thing is we do live in, in the internet age. So, I mean, we, we can, you know, find little bits and pieces about, you know, players that we can have to look out for or, or, or teams that we have to look out for. But ultimately, getting there was the first step. I think, you know, coming out of Ontario, you know, uh, you know, traditionally we, we we are we do produce you know the stronger teams, and I, I really like our chances in terms of just in, in putting us in situations where we don't know anything about the team and the team knows little about us. I think you know we we have you know two or three individual talents that are really really hard to adjust to on the fly and things of that nature. So I mean we're we're going to be working really hard towards getting there um, four times a week, uh, five times a week uh, to, towards getting um, to to that national championship. We we know. It's a it's a U15 uh, men's national team year, and from from that standpoint, uh, we we've made it a goal for our individual players to showcase themselves and get there. And we know that this is a very very important feather to have on each of these players' resumes if they're going in that direction. So all sails ahead to it. It's been Manny Corona, head coach of Epic FC Toronto, the under 14 boys Ontario Cup champions. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you.